Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be baking a lot. I know a lot of you like to watch my baking videos. I know I say that all the time, uh, but I do. I, I get a lot of baking requests. Some of you may know my birthday is coming up in a few days. So I'm gonna bake a few things that I'm gonna take with us on my birthday trip that we're taking. We're gonna take a road trip. Some of you may already know. Um, it's not anything new. It's the same thing that I do every year, but we always go to a Disney resort and we just hang out by the pool and drinks and dinner with friends, family. And it's just a fun few days. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're taking the dogs with us this time. We're gonna be barbecuing. So yes, I wanna bake some desserts to take with us um, up to Orlando. So the first dessert that I'm gonna be making today is the French macaron. Le macaron français, as they say in France. Right before the pandemic started, I had a layover in Paris and I took a class on how to bake French macarons. Well, luckily, they let me keep the recipes. It is quite a difficult recipe. There is lots of components to it. So I've already pre-measured out everything. I've weighed everything. Pretty much since it is a European recipe, to be everything has been weighed and it's weighed by grams so at any point anything can go, go wrong with macarons as, as they have to me in the past but um, I'm hoping for the best I haven't messed this recipe up yet so everything should go as planned so these are gonna be my special birthday macarons I made like a birthday cake uh, filling for the inside of the macarons and they're gonna be delicious I'm also gonna top them with some sprinkles anyways you guys will see as the video goes on so the first thing that I've done is I've sifted some almond flour and some powdered sugar here into this bowl next thing we're gonna do is take this 92 grams of egg whites and pour into that almond flour and powdered sugar. Also guys, I bought some powdered food coloring. I've never used powdered food coloring before, but apparently it works really well in French macarons. not really the shade of blue that I wanted. Um, for some reason, it kind of looks, to me, it looks like teal. But anyways, when I add my meringue to this, it's gonna lighten in color, so we'll see <laughs> what color it ends up being. Also guys, over here on my stove, I am gonna make some simple syrup. Basically, I have put some sugar and water here. I'm gonna start to melt it down until it becomes syrup consistency. I have to get my candy thermometer because it has to get to 118 degrees Celsius, I believe. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my stand mixer all set up. In this bowl, I have 92 grams grams of egg whites. Now these egg whites have been aged. I cracked them about two days ago and I've left them sit in the fridge. I'm not really sure exactly why um, they say to age it, but they do say that it is better for the meringue. So I had the time, I just let my egg whites sit in the fridge for two days. So they have been aged for at least 48 hours. So we're gonna get this started and get it frothing up uh, and get my meringue going. All right, so my simple syrup has to get to 244 degrees Fahrenheit before I can start pouring it over into my egg whites. It's almost there. All right, so I added my simple syrup to my egg whites. As you can see here, it's really beautiful, nice meringue. Got a nice stiff peak. I don't know if you guys can see it right there, but. Quite a lovely sip, Pete. It is now time to start my macronage. <laughs> Basically, what we're gonna be doing is gonna be putting this meringue into this mixture. You gotta do it so perfectly. Um, the macronage, basically, you're incorporating the meringue into the paste, the almond paste. You're deflating some of the air that you've beat into the meringue, and you're deflating just enough air so these cookies come out perfectly. But yeah, it's kinda complicated. I've done this a few times. I've messed it up a few times, but the last time I made this, it actually came out perfectly. Okay, so we're gonna add my meringue to my paste in thirds. All right guys, so my camera just died. But anyways, this is the consistency that it has to be. Basically, it has to ribbon ribbon down and fall just like that. And I think it's perfect. Now time to put this into a piping bag. So I got my piping bag, I got a tip in there. Um, I put it in this, uh, it's actually a Nutribullet and it works perfectly to put uh, stuff inside of a piping bag when you don't have someone to help you. So I have my silicone baking mat with a little template for the macarons. And I better get this started because it seems like this is oozing out of my piping bag. <laughs> All right, really quickly guys, before these dry out, let me show you 
what they look like. Not bad, right? I'm gonna add some sprinkles to them. Those look beautiful. Now we gotta let these dry out for maybe about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we're gonna bake these after. 20 minutes later. All right, so I'm nervous. I may, I may have put these a little too close, and I really hope that they don't bake into each other. So I'm really nervous about that. But other than that, they look really good. All right, here they go. 12 minutes. All right, guys, so my macarons have to come out beautifully. Of course, there are gonna be some that, you know, are not so pretty, like this one right here, for example. It's kind of cracked, uh, but that happens with macarons. You just gotta pick out the prettiest ones, and then you use those. So basically, I have started matching these cookies with the cookie of its size that matches it and whatnot. I also have my filling that I made a little earlier. It's basically just like a birthday cake frosting that I'm gonna use to fill these macarons, and I have, I've already put it into my piping bag, ready to go. All right, I am back on my camera. <laughs> I got it charged up. There are my lovely macarons and they actually taste really, really good. They're perfect consistency. I think they're pretty perfect. I'm not gonna lie. All right, now it's time to fill them. So my birthday is three days away. Macarons are best after being refrigerated for two, at least one night. They must be refrigerated to get their best flavor. But these will be refrigerated for like two or three nights before I actually get to serve them and have them and share them with my friends and family. So that's why I'm doing them a few days in advance. So um, I realized that my birthday cake frosting wasn't working. It was getting too buttery and it was kind of like melty. So I decided to make a lemon curd uh, buttercream. Luckily I had some lemon curd on hand and I had some butter. So I quickly whipped up some lemon curd buttercream. Yeah, so now I'm gonna fill these with a lemon curd buttercream. That was exhausting. Wow, it's been, I think, I started three hours ago. It's nine o'clock and I started around six, I think. Oh, my back hurts, I'm tired, but I got my uh, macarons done. So I'm excited about those. My dishwasher is going right now with all the dirty dishes. So um, we also have some of the broken ones that I had left over. And then also I had uh, one that I took out so that John could try tonight when he comes home from work. Tomorrow, I'll be making my birthday cake. And I also wanted to take some chocolate chip cookies, so I'll probably be doing that as well. So yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. The next day. It's tomorrow. Welcome back to another day of baking. Today I'm gonna to be making my chocolate chip cookies and my birthday cake. Birthday cake that I'm making is a milk bar birthday cake. I made it last year. If you wanna go watch that video, I will link it up here. It's, it's pretty much step by step on how to make the cake. Uh, today I'm gonna to kinda of like give you guys a little quick, more summarized, condensed version of me making my birthday cake. But first we're gonna start off with my chocolate chip cookies. I'm using a different recipe this time. I'm using Binging with Babbage's recipe. Binging with Babbage is a cooking show here on YouTube. If you guys don't already know, he has millions and millions of subscribers. So I'm gonna try his cookie recipe. I haven't tried his yet. I'm excited because it looked really good. Of course, I have all my ingredients already pre-set out right here. It's always the easiest and fastest way to bake, to just pre-set out everything, all of your ingredients, weigh everything out ahead of time. That way, it makes baking so much faster and easier. Okay, so I've also browned some butter. Brown butter, basically you're toasting the milk solids in a stick of butter. So I put this in a saucepan in the stove. I've showed you guys this before. Uh, basically, it changes the flavor of the butter. It tastes a little bit more like caramelly. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever baked with brown butter. It's like the new thing. Most of the cookie recipes nowadays have brown butter in their recipes. So I went ahead and made some brown butter and I stuck it in the fridge yesterday and it's now re-solidified, but those flavors are still there. I'm just gonna pop this right in here. Add my sugar. Next, I'm adding my two cold eggs. And now finally time to add my dry ingredients, which there's flour, uh, salt, uh, baking soda, and cinnamon. 
Now that my dry ingredients are incorporated, it's time for the most important part, which is the chocolate. What I'm about to do is not part of Babish's recipe. This is my own thing. I'm actually adding Belgian dark chocolate and Belgian milk chocolate. I bought these two bars of chocolate when I was in London and I figured I'd use them for this recipe. Basically, I took the two bars of chocolate and chopped them up into little chunks and shards of chocolate. So that way I don't have to use chocolate chips. Nothing wrong with chocolate chips, but since I had these bars on hand and I wanted to use them, I figured I'd use them so so there you have it and that was a lot of hard work chopping them up because I think the chocolate was, was in the refrigerator so that may have made it a little harder to chop up but, but it's all done time to add it into my dough I got my dough and I got my baking sheet and an ice cream scoop this is how I'm gonna scoop out all my cookie dough onto my baking sheet so that way they're all nice and even and pretty How good do these look? Now I know what you guys are thinking, you're probably thinking, Francesco, you have put your, your cookie dough way too close together, it's gonna spread in the oven and they're gonna all bake together. But no, that's not what's gonna happen. Because you know what? These are not getting baked yet. These are gonna go into the refrigerator for the next 24 to 48 hours to let those flavors really sink in. Not only that, I wanna bake them the day that I'm heading up on our trip, so that way they're not just sitting around. Basically, they'll be even more delicious than they would be if I were to bake them now, because I'm gonna let them sit and marinate in the refrigerator, and it's gonna be a beautiful thing <laughs> when they hit my mouth and my belly. All right, so these are going in the fridge. Next step is to bake my cake. Three hours later. All right, after a little break, I took a nap, I had lunch. Now it's time to make my birthday cake. So again, I made it last year. I'm gonna be following along with the recipe. It's on the Milk Bar website. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have ever had any Milk Bar products, but they're great, they're delicious. The cake was really good. I had it last year for my birthday and I really loved it enough that I'm gonna make it again. So, so today I'm gonna be making just an actual cake. I've already made the birthday cake crumb, which is one of the components that goes with the cake, it goes in between each layer. I've also already made the frosting all behind the scenes in advance a couple days ago. I got it waiting for me in the fridge just to make this a little faster and easier. Um, again, if you guys wanna see like the full step-by-step -step of all of that, it is on my channel, I'm gonna link it right here again. Um, so yeah, go ahead and watch that if you wanna watch it. If not, this is a quick little summarized version of my birthday cake, so hope you guys enjoy. All right, and I am back. So I had a little bit of a wardrobe change. My cake came out perfectly out of the oven. I dumped it onto this silicone mat. Now it's time to stamp out my rings. So this cake is gonna be three layers. So I'm gonna be stamping out two circles, and then I'm gonna form the third layer from a couple of cake scraps, so.
All right guys, and there you have it. Now time to pop this bad boy into the freezer. It's always stressful whenever I'm constructing these cakes, um, but I got through it. Time to go in the freezer. It's gonna be in there another day and a half or so. We're leaving the day after tomorrow, so it'll be in the freezer for a day and a half until we take it up to Orlando. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna reveal the cake to you guys until my next vlog, which is my birthday vlog. So if you guys tune in to that vlog, you guys will be able to see what the cake looks like if you haven't already seen it in my previous videos. So just make sure that if you are subscribed that you also have those notifications turned on. There is a little bell next to the subscription button and you set it to all and it'll alert you anytime that I post a video. So go ahead and do that and you'll know when I post my birthday vlog. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this baking video. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this type of video. Also, let me know if you'll be trying any of these recipes or if you have tried them in the past. I would love to hear from you guys. I always love reading your comments. So again, with all that being said, if you're new here, please subscribe, hit that like button, leave some comments and i'll see you guys on the next video looking forward to sharing my birthday trip with you guys and yeah okay bye